Alright, so this is going to be a simplification of my two-part video, Diogenes, uh, Cosmopolitanism, and Anti-Statism. That's what I think the two-part video series was called. And both of those videos were 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to simplify it here. Alright, so basically Cosmopolitanism is like the contrast to patriotism and nationalism, which I'm getting to in my four-part video series. And patriot cosmopolitanism says that I believe I am a citizen of the world and not a nation state. If we apply cosmopolitanism in a literal stance where there is world government, because that's what they ultimately want, laws that are being enforced by a group via state or state-like fantasy structure, throughout the entire world which is funny because there's laws that are being naturally generally enforced like murder murder is something that's commonly illegal so what I make from this statement is that they're going to advocate things that aren't commonly valued as world laws, which isn't a good thing. And I, may, for example, maybe abortion laws are enforced around the world, so you can't do abortions around the world. Or something random like that that would be inconvenient. Not that I support or am I against abortion laws, it's just something that's inconvenient to enforce around the world. And inconvenience is a key. The reason I bring up cosmopolitanism is because I think that's being attempted in the real world, and I think that this is this key argument finding an argument for against the state that's specifically that the state is impossible in its function, and that it's possible. For to do good things for society, not that it's inconvenient and will eventually collapse due to its perpetual and marginally increasing inconvenience. So I wanted to prove that the states were totally dysfunctional in their goals. How could I do this? Well, different states consolidate over stateless societies. They constantly consolidate, not till they consolidate over 100% of the world territories and seas but until they consolidate like maybe 95% or 90 or even 85 oh 70% is good enough for consolidation so that the whole world is involved with some states but of course states try to consolidate over other states which becomes a problem so what do they do they get into wars, and that's why there needs to be an overlying consolidation of federal governments over several states, which is worse. And they have their own plans. And then from there on, there needs to be a because there's even more wars after this consolidation on a higher level of something that would be known as a world government. And the way I see it is, once these higher-ups consolidate, they will force a segregation or integration of these different people. What can I say from then on? Then, all you need to make stateless societies without having to wait for these inconveniences of these consolidations and forced segregations or even integrations is that you can form these stateless armies and then you can start deconsolidations from the ground up grassroots but this is going to be different from guerrilla warfare where there's no rules because it will function 
in the form of counter consolidations. That is, that there's a consolidation. These anti state forces and they eventually emerge polycentrically as they take down and deconsolidate places and then move from a higher level where they're going from the states to the national to the world governments and that's how it perpetually built up these will deconsolidate these armies function in deconsolidation. And how do you make deconsolidation simplified? Think about it like this. A smaller place, more population, less allies, the easier deconsolidation begins because that's the weak point. And states can't just make all places extremely consolidated there's going to be a gradient between what's consolidated a lot and what's not consolidated that much so I hope this video helps and does a better job than my 30 plus minute ramblings